The dark web and Rust were basically made for each other, and Arty is the project that's finally going to bring them together. Arty is a rapidly maturing implementation of Tor's anonymity protocols in the Rust programming language that will hopefully replace the unsafe and underperforming C implementation that we currently have. And since this is a rewrite of the protocols, Arty also has a goal of being more modular than the current Tor implementation, which functions more like a SOX proxy that has had additional features that have been glued onto it over time. Arty is particularly important for the memory safety guarantees that Rust will introduce into Tor's protocols. You see, the majority of the most severe vulnerabilities that Tor has had over the years came from memory safety issues. And really, this is the case with most big software projects that have been around for a while, which is the reason why you see so many organizations, including DARPA, wanting Rust implementations of their current C and C++ programs, even if they have to use AI to handle a lot of that rewrite and testing work. Arty should also bring much better performance to sites on the Tor network once it's released with full Onion support. The current C implementation of Tor is single-threaded, which is obviously a major bottleneck since even single-board computers have multi-core processors these days. And this single-threaded design is part of the reason why the Tor network still seems so slow despite global internet speeds getting faster every year, especially in the countries that actually run the majority of Tor's nodes. Arty is multi-threaded, and improvements like this will not only make the Tor network faster, but they will help the Onion services handle load-based DDoS attacks a lot better which means fewer 504 errors when you go to your favorite Onion site. The multi-threading also makes introduction attacks harder, which is when someone is targeting the introduction points in the Tor network that are used for establishing secure connections to hidden services. These types of attacks have the ability to de-anonymize the server that is running the Onion site, and in some cases, they can de-anonymize the people that are connecting to it too. Another reason for the rewrite is that Tor, like a lot of old projects, suffers from spaghetti code that people can't understand. The initial Tor implementation was, again, pretty much a SOX proxy that had more features added to it over time. There's people that have come and gone from the Tor project, and if I had to guess, the majority of people that are working on Tor's protocols right now probably struggle with a lot of that code that was written back around 2002 when the project was first created. I mean, hell, a lot of the people working on Tor today probably weren't even born when the project first started. So a rewrite was certainly due, and Rust is the best candidate for it right now. And I know that some people have very valid concerns about this since Tor, as we know it, has been in development for more than 20 years and it's already battle tested. Whereas the Rust programming language itself hasn't even been around for that long. And now we're supposed to trust one of the most important anonymity protocols ever to be created to be rewritten in this quote unquote experimental language. Of course, the debate between C and Rust could go on forever, but the facts are that memory safety issues and the difficulty of multi-threading the current Tor implementation are holding the project back. And as things stand right now, it's a lot harder for people to develop for Tor or to integrate Tor with their own applications. And there's a lot of applications out there that could benefit from a direct Tor integration and make that level of anonymity more accessible to people that don't know how to manually tunnel their app's traffic through Tor. When I was browsing through the source code of Arty, I was really happy to see a Hello World example being used with the Axum Web Framework and a fairly new version of Axum at that. Axum is one of the most popular Rust web frameworks and many other Rust web libraries like it are being used in the back end of big production applications right now. 
So with all that out of the way, I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of Artie by using it as a SOX proxy for Tor. As you can see, I've already cloned the Artie repo to my system, and I've got Rust in the latest version of Cargo installed on my system as well. So all you need to do if you've got a setup similar to mine with Rust and Cargo installed is to just clone the RD repo, CD into it, and then run this cargo run command that they have right here in the project. So it's going to take a little bit of time to build and compile, you know, if you've never worked with uh, cargo before or any compiled language in that case, then it can take a little bit of time for it to run. Um, but once it's finished, you're going to get this information here about where Artie is listening. So by default, it listens on both an IPv6 connection and an IPv4 connection, of course, on your local host, and it's on port 9150. If you wanna change this in the settings, you can do that and then just run cargo run again, and then it will run on a different port. Now I'm also going to point out this safety notice down here below because if you're going to distribute binaries that are built with RD, well, for one, you really should be using Docker for that because Docker is a good idea anyway for reproducibility. But kind of a unique issue that we have here in this case is that the compiler is going to include file system path information in the binary that it generates and like they say here, if your path is sensitive because it includes your username and that's something that people could use to find you, then obviously that could be an OPSEC problem depending on what kind of project you're going to use Artie to build. So make sure that you follow the build options in the docs here if you're going to be distributing binaries, again, Docker is probably the most straightforward approach to handle this, which has a lot of other benefits as well. Okay, so Artie is fully up. We have our notification down here that a guard is usable. And let's go ahead and use Artie to actually proxy an application. So here I have the Monero GUI and you can actually connect two remote nodes over the Tor network and you can connect to them over I2P as well. So this is monero.fail, which lists out a bunch of nodes. Of course, you should look at the warning that they have at the top because there's no way to know whether these are government run nodes or not. Uh, but you know, I think this node right here, this irs.gov node, this seems like it's gonna be pretty reputable, okay? This is totally not gonna be a chain analysis honeypot. So let's go back into the Monero GUI wallet and let's paste this in. Uh, to the node settings here. And I actually already had it <laughs> configured in here. Now, because the Monero GUI wallet doesn't have Tor built into it, which again, this is hopefully something that Artie is going to fix, uh, we have to manually proxy this application. So we'll go back into the interface and we have to copy over our SOX proxy that's running on our local host. So we'll go back over to the terminal and of course it's 127.001 and we're running on port 9150. So we'll just paste that in here and copy this over here, remove this colon. And now if I go back over to my node, I should be able to click on this and get it to connect. And you can see that my wallet is now fully synchronized and it synchronized instantly because I just tested this out a couple minutes before recording it. So there we go. Artie is allowing me to use my Monero anonymously and uh, you know wait for the alphabet boys that are running this irs.gov node to come and get me. But anywho, try Artie out for yourself. And when your programming socks are done in the wash, consider contributing to the Artie project so that you can help make the dark web rusty. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my stylish merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.